All right, out to skiers. It's Colton Rice with another episode of On the Lift With. Today we have a very special guest, Anno Weiringa. How's it going, Anno? Good, Colton. Good. It's a great, great <laughs> place to be on Wildcat Chair. It's maybe my favorite chairlift at Alta. That was what I was going to ask. This chair's been around for a long time. It's kind of like the quintessential Alta chairlift. Well, it has had a little upgrade going. Uh, had some equipment upgrade over the years and like my own buddy Vern Mulligan says they're just machines and they never wear out you just like your car you put your parts in every now and then and they'll keep running forever yeah so we've put new parts and done modifications and done things but this chair was designed by Jan Kunchinski that's why you can see the Y-A-N on the chair oh. and uh John was a great ski lift designer, everything designer, engineer, genius caliber guy, one of my favorite mentors and friends, and he designed this, and that's why you can see, you know, there's no, uh, the chair's way up there, yeah. and there's only one-sided towers, he said, no need to waste all the energy and time to bring that side down here and make it go under wheels, we only have to do this side so we can stay at this elevation and uh, so we did that and he's just got all sorts of innovative things on it and this is the most reliable piece of equipment we have in this chair. We used to have an old center pole chair and it was miserable and we, nobody liked it and so one time he was here and I said John we got to design a single pole swept back design chair and so he started drawing and sketching and building and and the outcome was this chair and it's really comfortable in the back of yeah. this chair has these nylon straps because Jan when we were sitting and trying to figure out what the metal straps should be in the back Jan liked to sit like this and lean back <laughs> and I like to sit up really straight uh-huh and we argued and argued about the angle of those and he said oh, I will fix it. <laughs> and he fixed it and he came up with these nylon straps. So no matter which way you sit, the it, chair is comfortable and it is. it's got a great back. It is super comfortable. So, you know, that doesn't have much to do with anything except this is my favorite chair for a variety of that's reasons. A, that's a great reason. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of helped design this chair. Yeah, and then we got to the seat pads and we argued about what the foam should be in the seat pads and I was down in Carson City, Nebraska, with, or Carson City, Nevada with him, and we were, so we went to the foam company, and we got all sorts of different densities of foams, and open cell and closed cell, and went back and had the same arguments about what foam we should use, and ended up with this, so they're just enough padding, not too much, <laughs> he didn't want them very thick. So. so when you're on the Wildcat chair, know that they meticulously designed this to be comfortable for you. <laughs> and Anno's got a, got a part in it as well. Think, think about the back, yeah. It's yeah, great. very comfortable. Yeah. Right on, well that's cool, I didn't know any of that. Yeah. So Anno, you've been here 45 years, I'm sure you know some of the best spots on the hill. Um, when you show up on a POW day, where where do you go to first, if, if you had a choice? Well, to beat the crowds. All. All powder skiing is great, and it's just wherever you happen to be. I mean, if I get my choice, I don't have a set spot. I look at the wind, all the things that you'd look at for an avalanche forecast to figure out where the snow would be the best. Elevation, aspect, you know, watch the wind, think about the densities, whether it's snow that moves. Think about whether it might be grapple pooling coming off of somewhere steep. Just factor in all those things and then go, yeah, let's go let's check to this the hogs out. back or style home or somewhere, you know, wherever it is you're going. So you look at it very much like like a weather forecaster. Like where where the wind blow in from, where might we find some like great snow deposits? No, I look there. at it as an avalanche forecaster. Avalanche forecaster, sorry. Because that's what all ski patrollers are is avalanche forecasters. Right. And I started here in 1972 as a ski patroller and 
and uh, you know, I have a ski controller at heart, and uh, so that's what I do. So you're you're a GM, but at heart, you you identify most with being a ski patroller. Well, it's it's such an essential part of Alta that I've always, you know, I was lucky enough to get to do that for part of my life, and then I understand that pretty well, and so, and it's, you know, when it's snowing and the game's on around here, it's so much function around the ski patrol, so, yeah, I'm a, I have a, I have a soft spot for ski patrolling, there's no doubt. That's good, we got to take care of those guys, they can take care of us. So, um, did you notice there's some jumps here? <laughs> we're uh, we're here. Uh, it's Friday before closing weekend, so we've got some some Frank activities going on over here, Ooh. which is not an Alta-sanctioned thing, but it just kind of happens organically. <laughs> yeah, like, that would describe it pretty well. <laughs> quite the operation over as there. As long as it's within some bounds of <laughs> nobody's getting hurt, yeah, not bothering our ski operation. Yep. We like to let a little organicness happen here. Yeah. So, Anna, before you came out to Alta, you were a patroller <laughs> um, a little bit before you came out. Can you tell us about where were you Well, I was a patroller of Rainy Mountain first, Rainy Mountain. <laughs> outside of Dillon, Montana. Uh -huh. And uh, that was my first ski patrol job. When and was that? That was, uh, that was probably 1969. Right on. And then uh, 1970, 71, and 72, I was a part-time patroller at uh, Bridger Bowl. Wow. And uh, that's where I got my true ski patrolling training and learned how to shoot military rifles for avalanche control. And yeah. So when I came here, I was already a trained gunner. Been Here's the gun. gunner at that gun mount for a lot of years. Every year, I think the very first year I was here, I became a gunner, and I've been a gunner every year since. And that's one of your favorite things to do, huh? I, you know, I do. I do have quite a affection for <laughs> gunning. It's, uh, and it's not for everybody. I can tell you, it's, some people aren't that crazy about it. I got to join you the other morning, and I have to say I understand. It was pretty cool. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> well, it's the only, you know, fine-tuned machines and beautifully put together. And, you know, if you were shooting them for their intended purpose, which is to kill people and blow things up and cause death and destruction, you wouldn't be such a... Riding the chair without skis today, which is a first for us. <laughs> first for me, I don't know about probably not you, but for me for sure. Yeah, sometimes I forget my skis. <laughs> well, Anno, thanks for joining us. It's been a huge pleasure working with you All this right. year. Thanks, Cole. Thank you this very much. Great. All right.